Good afternoon. Welcome to the Cathedral Basilica of St. James. Today we celebrate the most holy name of Jesus. Our opening hymn is number 508, Angels from the Realms of Glory, number 508. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Father. We know that it's a little cold and rainy outside today, but we can recall during the summer where it was blistering hot and there was no rain at all and the reservoirs were drying up, so we, we welcome this rain. It's a little in, uncomfortable with the rain. We celebrate the most holy name of Jesus, who was popularized by Bernardine of Siena and given to us as an opportunity to recall that Jesus is indeed Savior. His name means God saves. Today is also the name day of holy name of Jesus Parish and Windsor Terrace, where Father Lawrence, or more commonly known as Larry Ryan, is the pastor. And so we commend all the folks there and the pastor and the ministers to a great feast day and a fruitful ministry. Today is also the titular feast day of the Society of Jesus, known more popularly, popularly as the Jesuits. And I am exceedingly thankful to all of my teachers the Jesuits who taught me, they were very strict. They didn't let me get away with anything, but I think they were the best teachers I could ever have had. And so I'm very thankful to all the men and women involved in the Jesuits, and especially in those in education. Today is the 10th day of Christmas, and we continue to acknowledge the birth of our Lord and Savior and our introduction are leading into the kingdom of God given to us by our Lord. So let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded the salvation of the human race on the incarnation of your word, give your peoples the mercy they implore, so that all may know there is no other name to be invoked but the name of your only begotten Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
A reading from the first letter of St. John. If you consider that God is righteous, you also know that everyone who acts in righteousness is begotten by him. See what love the Father has bestowed on us that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope, based on him, makes himself pure as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin commits lawlessness, for sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who remains in him sins. No one who sins has seen him or known him. The word of the Lord.
dwelt among us. To those who accepted him, he gave power to become the children of God. From the Holy Gospel according to John. John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He is the one of whom I said, A man is coming after me who ranks ahead of me because he existed before me. I did not know him, but the reason why I came baptizing with water was that he might be made known to Israel. John testified further, saying, I saw the Spirit come down like a dove from the sky and remain upon him. I did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told, told me, on whomever you see the Spirit come down and remain, he is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Now I have seen and testified that he is the Son of God the Gospel of the Lord. I was thinking that we could have a very short homily indeed if we just paused for a moment, actually. These words that are part of the antiphon for the Alleluia are so profound. Really, I mean, for after Mass, later on, sometime today, if you have a chance, really think about it. The Word of God became flesh and dwelt among us. To those, to those who accepted him, he gave power to become the children of God. Can you imagine the power to become the children of God? How can that not be profound? But anyway, to better understand the situation posed by the crisis in John's community that I spoke about yesterday, and John the Baptist's denial of being the Christ, we can look at one of Jesus' more well-known parables, the parable of the sower. You know the story. That's why I said it's well-known, right? A farmer sows seeds. Now, of course, a lot of us Living in downtown Brooklyn, we don't sow too many seeds. But you can imagine somebody with a handful of grass seeds, let's say, right? And they're walking through, and they're just throwing them out like this. Some fell on the wayside, some on stony places, some among thorns. But none of these produce fruit. Some fell on good soil and produced a harvest, of a hundred, sixty, or thirty times as much. The disciples later on asked Jesus, what does this mean? And Jesus, not very, not very happy about this, he says, you guys don't get it? If you don't understand this parable, how will you understand any parable? However, 
brothers and sisters. To know the name of Jesus is to know Jesus, and that in and of itself unlocks everything. St. John is concerned that there are those leaving the community in a huff to start their own communities. John concludes, they, were, they went out from us, for if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. People come to churches, and people leave churches for all sorts of reasons. Not everyone who joins a church or leaves a church does so because of God's will, but for their own individual purposes. A pastor who has truly endeavored to lead his community according to the authentic tradition of the church and in accordance with the scriptures, can be saddened by people leaving the church, but it may not actually have anything to do with him. I know as a pastor, I, I wouldn't feel that way. I would always think there had to have been something that I did, but that's not necessarily true. It is clear that John doesn't believe that people are leaving the community because they are motivated by the Holy Spirit. If indeed they had become children of God and were surrendered to God's will, why didn't they just stay and try to work things out and try to make things better? But as we know, they left in a huff. And not only that, wouldn't allow any of the people who stayed in the community to socialize with them at all and wouldn't let anybody in the new communities go back to the former community. There is one Lord, there is one faith, and there is one baptism. And there is only one name under heaven by which people are to be saved, and that is the name of Jesus. Those people who left John's community may have gone off for their own purposes, but not for God's purposes. Priests, Levites, Pharisees come from headquarters to go down and ask John if he is the Christ. They ask John if he is Elijah. They ask John if he is the prophet. And he denies all of this and astoundingly declares that Jesus is the one. Now, if these priests, Levites, and Pharisees had truly been men of God, truly surrendered to God's will, shouldn't they have been concerned about John? Shouldn't they have tried to bring him back to the truth? Shouldn't they have said, but John, you know that's not the true teaching. Come on, John. You know, what are you doing? Why, why are you baptizing these people? You know, I mean, you know, come on. Let, let's sit down and talk about this. Let's pray together, and God will lead us in the right way. But instead, they hammered this guy. <laughs> they kept hammering him, you know? Or they could have said, well, you know, John, we trust you. And we'll ask this guy ourselves when, as you say, he makes himself known. And as you know, that did not happen. The word of God takes root in good soil. Those who believe in his name, he gives the power to become children of God. And their lives of righteousness and their lives of purity prove that they are indeed children of God. The quality of the seed itself was never in question, but it was the quality of the soil. If our lives aren't bearing good fruit, whose fault is that?
Let us stand to pray. Let us pray that all people will come to know the holy, most holy name of Jesus, and by the power of his name may indeed become children of God. And so we pray for all the members of the church and all the people in the world. missionaries may be graced with the gift of fortitude to proclaim the saving power of God to all the ends of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of nations may be guided by the Holy Spirit in all their words and deeds. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That families torn apart by conflict or distrust, may strive for reconciliation and seek God's healing mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are gathered here in person and virtually in prayer may be given the strength to remain in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that all those who have died may enter the heavenly Jerusalem, joining the angels and saints in giving glory to God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Camille Ferdinand on her birthday, for whom this mass is being offered, may God, who has guided her and protected her from the day of her birth, continue that same loving care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We unite our prayers with those of our Bishop Robert Brennan and the entire church as we continue to pray for the repose of the soul of Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord our God, these are the prayers that we have spoken. Hear also the many prayers and concerns that remain in the silence of our hearts, and answer them as you always do, according to your holy and loving will. And we ask this in the most holy name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Bringing you these offerings from what your bounty bestows on us, we pray, O Lord, that just as you have given to Christ, obedient even unto death, the name that saves, 
so you may grant us protection by its power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. be pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim you in that, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and a chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Robert our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. 
Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through man with him in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. In the power of Jesus' name that makes us children of God, let us now pray in confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. God has not made me to be sent from man, but on this day the word of my soul shall be sealed.
communion hymn is number 510 of the Father's Love Begotten, number 510. Let us pray. May the sacrificial gifts offered to your majesty, O Lord, to honor Christ's name and which we have now received, fill us, we pray, with your abundant grace so that we may come to rejoice that our names too are written in heaven. Through Christ our Lord, The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God, and have a most blessed day. The closing hymn is number 524, Joy to the World. Number 524. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room, and heaven and nature.
nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven. 